Nestled within the Selkirk and Purcell mountain ranges is a small town, not unlike many other small towns in the region. And within that small town resides an even smaller town man. This man is known for loving the simple things in life. A warm home-cooked meal, the bi-weekly paycheck, and most notably, his favorite pastime, fly fishing. But there's something a bit different about the way he approaches this hobby. He doesn't just go to any outdoor store to purchase the flies he uses to fish. He meticulously crafts and creates his own flies, using materials from the land he's lived on for decades. And you may be wondering, what is this fly fisherman's name? Well, his name is George, and he's not just any fisherman. He's actually my grandpa. George, or as you just heard me call him, my grandpa, is an outdoorsman through and through. My earliest memories with him involve hunting trips, driving down back roads, and I think he even had a small farm at one point. Now growing up, I always knew he was a devout fisherman. I just never quite understood the extent of his love for the hobby. So I took a trip to his hometown to learn more about what he does, what inspires him, and what has kept his passion alive for so many years. You ever done interview? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is George Pacin and I'm owner of George's Flies. I've been tying for 32 years. Well, I picked it up when I was real young. I smoked my father and my brother and friends and we snared fish and then we fished with fishing rods and then I got into fly fishing and then into fly tying. Well, I've been tying for a long time and just all the flies and I put it back into getting different materials. There's so many different new products out there these days, it's nice to have them. And a fly tire is always trying different flies, you know, and the joy is that you get to tie it and go out and fish it and catch a fish with it. And then you're proud that something you made makes you feel good. You could go down and buy a fly at the store, but it's not the same as you making the fly and taking it out and catching a fish on it. Size 10, you can use size 10 to 6 on this. We'll get that fly in, in the front and back and tie this lead down. For the tail, we've got some pheasant tail. Then we'll put some peacock on for the body. We'll grab some glue to make it stronger. And then a little blue of the peacock eye there. And then we'll check the eye to make sure the eye's clear so they can put your fly line on. And that's the half bath in. Now here's what I find really interesting about what my grandpa does. He uses his own custom materials to tie his flies. Everything from the deer he hunts to small game like rabbits and badgers, they're custom tailored to him and it helps establish a deeper connection to the fish that he's catching. I had no clue my grandpa was this involved in the process of the flies he uses for fishing. And I think discovering something like that about a family member you've known your whole life is actually quite special. And then like materials I've got, you can see here, I got peacock, turkey, pheasant tail, pheasant sword. I've got pelts, like this is a full badger and all kinds of material. And the deer I've shot and I've, I've dyed it. They're all different colors. I got them dyed. Here I got uh, mule deer, caribou, elk. You can even use, so, so you can even use dust mop. Got all kinds of hair, black bear, brown bear, fox, wolf, all kinds of wild animals. You're using white thread and you want to change the color, you can use any color of Sharpie to do up the head. Or if you're doing a foam body one, you can put little spots on it or stripes on it. You just let your imagination go and create whatever.
going out, just being out in the outdoors and the mountains here in BC is just relaxing. Better than sitting home and watching TV and, you know, some people like baseball and football and all that. If I see a fishing show on TV, I shut the TV off and I go fishing. If I see a hunting show on TV, I shut the TV off and go hunting. Get out and do the real thing. Fly tying, I think, is a very good hobby and it's good, like, if you can start younger people off, it's a very good hobby to have. It can be time consuming, but if you're like me, I just tie two or three flies a day after work. <laughs> I got a sucker, I think. Yeah, it's a sucker. Once you get used to it, you can, you know, do one in two minutes easy. You know, but you always want to take your time and try to make it look the best you can and critique yourself. I don't think it would matter to the fish, it's more to the human being that likes the looks and draws it to him. While talking to my grandpa, I quickly discovered he's still pushing the limits of his craft, challenging himself to create things he's never created before. He told me he wants to tie flies for sharks, and he's even working on some glow-in-the-dark flies. I have to turn some lights on. To glow for about an hour when you hit them good with the light, Put clay on them, put them in the oven, bake them, take them out, sand them off, prime them, and then dip them in glow paint. What I've really learned from sitting down with my grandpa is we have way more in common than I thought we did. He has a whole other creative side that I never really got to see when I was a kid. Visiting his basement workshop and seeing all the tools and materials he's acquired over the years made me really glad I took the time to learn more about not only what he does, but him as a person. Just being out in the fresh outdoors, knowing yourself in the lonely quietness of the lake and nobody around. Come on, fishy.